and welcome to the National Real Estate Post. It is I, Frank Gray, here to update you on this glorious Friday morning. I tell you, today I've got one mention and two stories, all that are going to make you more business. First, the mention. Liberty Home Equity. They are a reverse mortgage lender. In fact, one of the leading ones, if not the leading reverse mortgage lender in the country. They are our sponsor. And they're going to do a webinar on January 25th on how to get started in reverse mortgage lending. You want to tune into this. It's going to help you get more business. Plus, it just might help out you and your family. So it's a good thing to check out. These webinars have been going fantastic. Click the banner you see here on the screen over on your right. Come to the Liberty Home Equity uh, uh, webinar January 25th. Learn all about reverse mortgages. Get into that book of business. Now, on with the show. Story number one. That's gonna be able to get you some more business possibly over the weekend. Here we go. As I was skimming through the news yesterday, I came across this article from Realtor Mag that I thought was pretty interesting. It's titled, The Metros That Will Feel Tax Reform The Most. And it caught my eye because, well, why not, right? I mean, I wanna know, I'm curious, you know, which areas might be impacted the most by tax reform. What the heck? So anyway, the three areas of the new tax law that impact real estate owners are the new maximum loan amount for your mortgage interest deduction. It used to be a million bucks, now it's only 750. The new real estate property tax deduction has been capped to $10,000. And then there's a new standard deduction, which seems to be a really big one because it'll result in fewer than 10% of tax filers to actually itemize their deductions, according to the article. Now, to figure it all out, here's what NAR did. Okay, NAR researchers calculated the share of homes with mortgages that are worth more than $750,000, as well as the share of owners who pay more than $10,000 for real estate taxes. Got it? Good. So with that all in mind, here's the top five metro areas that will feel the new tax reform the most. And for most of you in the country, you are not gonna have to worry about this at all. Okay, here's number one. San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, California. Here's number two. San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward, California. Number three, Santa Cruz, Watsonville, California. Number four, Santa Maria, Santa Barbara, California. And then number five, urban Honolulu, Hawaii. California. We get the most. There you go. Anyway, the article also provided a link to an interactive map, which is pretty cool, where you can see how many homeowners will be affected in the 382 metro areas that NAR studied. And I put that link down below if you're watching us on the website or up above if you're on Facebook. So you can click in it and check it out and see what you think. But here's how it's gonna help you make some more money. For a marketing tip, you may wanna send this link to your database as a talking point with the message reminding them that you're here to help them or anybody that they know with any of their mortgage or real estate needs depending on what you do. Just a thought. Again, the link is down below or up above on Facebook. Okay, so here's the second story that again could help you get a little business over the weekend. Here it goes. Housing Wire says that the latest Ellie Mae Millennial Tracker Report shows a slight decline in the average credit scores of closed loans to millennials from the previous year. There you go. So now you might be thinking to yourself, you know, why does this matter to me? How's this gonna help me this weekend? And the reason is because it means that lenders are making credit or mortgages, right, more available to more people. Aha, in fact, here's a direct quote from the article. According to Ellie Mae, in November 2016, the average FICO score on a closed FHA refinance loan to a millennial borrower was 678, but that dropped to 669 in November of 2017. On VA loans, the average FICO scores on a closed VA refinance loan dropped from 725 in 2016 to 710 in 2017. Again, I just see a good marketing opportunity here. Some of our prospective millennial home buyers out there Maybe thinking that they don't have good enough credit to get a home. Well, you can prepare a little message that directs them to this Housing Wire article. Again, there's a link for it down below or up above on Facebook. And you can just send this out to your database slash referral base, asking them to let their millennial renter friends and family know that lenders are loosening up their guidelines a little bit and extending more credit to people with lower FICO scores right now. And so they may just be able to get into a home 
right now instead of waiting, so they should get a hold of you. So there you go, bam! Two, count them two super easy database messages that you can send out this weekend that might help you get some leads in. See? It absolutely pays to watch the National Real Estate Post, doesn't it? You guys have a great weekend. Leave us your comments down below. Forward, share, subscribe. We'll see you on Monday here. The NREP. Ciao.